Uh, cool. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present this today. Uh, I'm going to be kind of quick here. This is not a really long um, pitch here, but I've got a couple links I'm going to share at the very end. I'll post those in the chat um, as well. Um, my focus that I want to cover on today, I want to cover today, is around SharePoint, uh, the SharePoint add-in retirement notice. Um, basically, answer some questions that I've been getting from a lot of my customers um, around the what, the why, the when, and then some guidance around the most popular questions um, that I've been seeing uh, from customers. So let's start with, well, what's happening? Um, well, what Microsoft has done is they've announced in 2013, or sorry, 2023, last year, they announced three major services that are going to reach end of life. Um, that's SharePoint 2013 workflows, Azure Access Control Services, and the SharePoint add-in model that includes both provider hosted and uh, SharePoint hosted uh, add-ins. Exactly, I love the flowers being thrown into the into the pit. Uh, I'm watching the chat, but I'm not going to try and answer those. I'll do those at the end um, when I'm done with this, so I can make sure clear room for some of the real people who are going to do some presentations coming after me. Um, so why are they doing this, and why am I mentioning all three of them and not just the SharePoint retirement, SharePoint add-in retirement, not SharePoint retirement? I'm not announcing anything new. Um, so this is partly done because of a couple different reasons, but partly because Azure ACS was replaced by Azure Active Directory that we now know as Microsoft Intra ID. So if you think back, add-ins were announced with SharePoint 2013, and then two years later, Microsoft announced that um, the future of Azure ACS was going to be Azure Active Directory. I know it was like nine years ago almost, but that's what the announcement was. And Azure ACS was going to be retired. Technically, Azure ACS was retired in 2018, but it didn't really affect us in the SharePoint space because we still had some behind the scenes stuff that was still going. Um, but this retirement is kind of coming a little bit hot and heavier now. It's gonna have more of an impact on us. And more of an issue with this now is that we have these three services that are all somewhat reliant and dependent upon each other. SharePoint add-ins were reliant upon Azure ACS to handle its app permissioning model. Um, but the problem that we had, and so we have a problem we have there is that Azure ACS is going away. Well, if Azure ACS is going away, well, the other challenge we have is that SharePoint workflows uh, rely on the add-in model for deployment, which they also rely on Azure ACS for permissioning as well. They don't leverage Azure Active Directory. So that's why you kind of saw all these uh, services get announced last year as all being retired and reaching in a, uh, their end of life. Um, Microsoft announced the 2013 workflow retirement in April of last year, and then they announced the add-in and ACS retirement from SharePoint Online in November um, of last year. So another reason why they are getting rid of SharePoint add-ins is quite frankly, they weren't widely adopted. Um, we had this concept of an app web, uh, didn't give us the kind of customization uh, opportunities that a lot of developers and customers asked for. And when Microsoft took a step back and they looked at, well, why? what are the most popular things that people are doing as far as developers go uh, in SharePoint Online? Well, when they looked at that, they saw that, hey, it's the uh, content editor web part and the um, script editor web part because people were using things like jQuery and other client-side solutions to modify existing SharePoint sites since add-ins didn't let you do it all that much. So what Microsoft um, did is we have, as again, we, we, we have some, one of the reasons they're also retiring this, these three different services is because we have uh, modern replacements for all of them. If you think back, add-ins, they were only available to us in classic pages. We have a modern experience now. And the way that you customize the modern experience is using um, uh, is primarily using uh, SharePoint framework. Uh, when it comes to SharePoint 2013 workflows, the modern replacement for that is Power Automate. The modern replacement for Azure Access Control Services is Azure Active Directory. Oh, sorry, Microsoft Intra ID. It's going to take a while for that to stick. Um, and again, for add-ins, the new replacement is uh, the SharePoint framework. So when is all of this happening? Well, here's my little Uber slide that kind of walks through all of this. I personally found that the announcements from Microsoft were hard to follow um, in the timeline. So I created my own timeline, which is what you see here. Um, also, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, I'm going to give you links at the very end that takes it takes you to like some articles that I've written that 
uh, kind of wrap up all the posts. So when I said that ACS was retired, when I say that Microsoft made the announcement that the future of ACS is Azure AD, I'm going to give you links to all of that stuff um, at the end. So we'll skip the first one that's kind of self-explanatory. We already know that stuff. That's the 2013 uh, year of, of SharePoint retirement services, um, where workflow was announced in April of 2023. Um, and then ACS and add-ins were announced um, uh, later in November. So, what does this mean coming forward to us? What what is this going to? What are the, the what's the timeline look like for this? Well, add-ins are on the far right here, and what's going to happen is in March of this year, so next month, um, Microsoft is going to stop allowing you to deploy a new add-in to the SharePoint store. Okay, so you're not going to be able to deploy to the SharePoint store. It's got nothing to do with your tenant. It's got, you cannot deploy new add-ins to the SharePoint store. You will be able to upgrade the existing ones. Um, when it comes to, when then when we move into July, they're gonna flat out stop letting anybody install a SharePoint add-in based solution uh, that has been deployed to the store. You're not gonna be able to install those in your tenants anymore, okay? That's what's gonna happen in July of this year. Now, later in this year, in November, this is when the first really big milestone hits. And that is if you don't already have a Microsoft 365 tenant, if you go to create a brand new Microsoft 365 tenant with SharePoint Online, in after November of this year, they haven't set it a specific day or time or whatever, but let's just call it you know, December the 1st. If I go to create a brand new tenant, I will not have the infrastructure that supports and implements SharePoint add-ins and Azure ACS, those will not exist or those will not be turned on in my tenant, in my SharePoint Online tenant. The only way that the that add-ins will continue to work or will work starting in December of this year is if you already had a Microsoft 365 tenant um, already created prior to November. Then the next big date milestone is in April of 2026, so about a year and a half later. In April of 2026, that's when the hammer comes down on all three of these services. Workflows stop working, Azure ACS stops working, and SharePoint add-ins stop working. So before you freak out and say, well, oh my God, what am I gonna do when this happens? Let me start talking through some of this stuff. So what does your migration story look like for this? Well, first thing to keep in mind here is that nothing is gonna be deleted. So if you've got an add-in and you've got a bunch of stuff where you're using this and everything's cool here, everything's working today, don't worry, nothing's gonna get deleted. Even in, even after the retirement date or the end of life, your add-ins will still be there. They won't work, they won't load, but they're just gonna stop loading, right? They're not, the data will still be there. The other thing that you need to keep in mind here is that nothing is automatic, meaning that you're not gonna get any kind of an automatic upgrade. You are gonna have to do some work if you want the, if you want to continue uh, your story when it comes, with, comes to your add-in based solutions. If you've built a SharePoint hosted add-in, the natural uh, migration story for that is to create a brand new SharePoint framework project and then re-implement your solution as a SharePoint uh, framework solution. There is no upgrade or there's no quick like migration of your add-in project to your SharePoint framework project. I guess there is, you get two monitors out, one of them's got the add-in on it, one of them's got the SharePoint framework project on it and you're just copying stuff over and hoping it all works and then making code changes until it does work. Um, if you have a provider hosted add-in, well, if there's a if there's an app part, which is basically a web part inside of that provider hosted add-in, you'll use the SharePoint framework to go migrate those changes over. Otherwise, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to play the consultant card and just say it depends because it really depends on what you're doing there. Now, there is some downside to this or there is some, some sad stuff that's going to happen, and that is we are losing some functionality with this retirement. Remote event receivers is a big one that comes up. Now, if it's an asynchronous event receiver, you're okay because the natural progression for that is using webhooks. You have webhooks in SharePoint, you have webhooks in Graph, and you can subscribe to webhooks and respond to when those things, when different events happen. However, we have a concept in remote event receivers called synchronous events, but unfortunately, there's no story for that going forward. Those are gone. Now, if you don't like that, there's a great email address you can use, brickwall at Microsoft. I'm just kidding. You have to give feedback to Microsoft and tell them that this is a major problem for you and maybe they'll do something, but I wouldn't hold your breath. I would consider it not, you're not gonna have any kind of a story 
uh, as far as synchronous events go, synchronous events go. So you need to look at the scenario of where you rely on synchronous events to be able to cancel items getting added to a list. Maybe reevaluate it. Maybe decide. Mm, maybe SharePoint's not the best story for that. But I just want to make sure that's aware. That's you know that you're aware of that. The other thing you're going to lose with this is what I call SharePoint add-in lifecycle events. In the add-in model, we have three different. Oh man, someone put the email address in there in the chat. That's not a real email address, guys. So don't get mad if you say Andrew gave me a bad email address. It actually might not bounce. So who knows? There might be someone whose alias is brick wall, but I doubt that would be unfortunate. Um, the the um, the in SharePoint add-ins, we have some lifecycle methods that happen when an app is installed, when it's upgraded, when it's um, uh, it's about to be uninstalled. Um, and it allows us to do like some good first run experience stuff. So, for example, if my web part required uh, a list to be present, I could use that event to fire up or to fire off uh, a message to a web hook of mine or an endpoint that then provision the list for me. That doesn't exist. We don't have that today. Um, big feature ask has been one of my big asks for the last uh, seven years, but um, we don't have that today, and Microsoft hasn't said anything about any plans related to that. So what my guidance to you would be is you need to implement a first run experience. So for example, you drop your web part on the page. The first thing it does is it checks to see, does that list I need, is it there? And if not, you provide some sort of a good experience for your user to either go call an administrator who's got permissions to create the list, to come back, use the web part, click a button, and then you provision it using the Graph or SharePoint REST API, um, or the user who may have permissions to do that could do that right there and then himself. So you need to implement your own first run experience. Now, let me uh, address some of the frequently asked questions that I've received from a lot of customers who are doing this uh, and some answers that I've tracked down. So they said, well, what about all my customizations I made to the ribbon bar or to what's called the edit control block or ECB menu or context menu uh, customizations? Uh, for that, you're going to use the SharePoint framework extension called a command set extension. So that's or a list view command set. So that's the natural progression you'd want to migrate those solutions to. It uses the same infrastructure under the covers. Um, what about solutions that use app only permissions? Ah, today it's not a good story because you can't do that. However, Microsoft has said in the comments of the announcement post that they are working on something to be able to address that. Today we can only do that with ACS with Azure ACS. However, what you what they're talking about doing is it looks like we're going to have the same kind of capability that we have in Graph to get a uh, resource specific uh, consent RSC uh, inside of our SharePoint sites. And the idea here is that I don't want to give an app uh, like admin permissions to everything in my entire tenant. Instead, I want to delegate that decision down to the site owner and let them just grant either the um, that permission to the site or to specific lists in that site. So doesn't exist today. Looks like it's coming. We got a couple of years until uh, we can see that actually land for us. But that's what's that's where the question comes in. Next thing is what about remote event receivers? Um, what about li library and list events, synchronous and asynchronous app lifecycle events? I think I already covered those in the last slide, so I'm not going to do that here. Um, what about deploy? What about apps or add-ins that are deployed to the SharePoint store? So the guidance here is that you're going to want to recreate these add-ins and have and give and communicate to your customers uh, that they need to go through and use and create the new add-in. It looks like you might be able to upgrade the existing one in the store, but that's not entirely clear. Um, it does look like some of the story is kind of evolving, like over uh, between now and the retirement. So I know Microsoft is still working on some stuff. Um, the, uh, the other thing that we have here, uh, it, that I want to cover, oh, now we're over here. So how do you migrate your deployed, uh, and add-ins that are currently in use, um, to new SharePoint framework solutions? So this is a great question. What if I've already got an add-in? It's already in use on a site. I've got some public properties that are already set on it. Am I going to lose it? And the answer is no, you're not going to lose it. Remember, I said earlier, nothing gets deleted. So what's going to happen is, is that your add-in simply won't load after the next, uh, after the the end of life, but the data will still be there. And so if you remember it, uh, on a SharePoint um, classic page, there's this, the web part framework, we have an object called the web part manager. 
And you can use the web part manager to get a reference to all web parts on the page, including all the public properties for that web part on the page. You could use that to pull the data out of that web part and then use the upcoming or what's currently now in preview Microsoft Graph Pages API uh, to add your SharePoint framework web parts to the page and then migrate that data that you extracted into the new piece. In other words, you're on your own. You got to do this yourself. I would talk to uh, the migration tools. They may end up giving something to to, uh, uh, to help us with this, but technically that's the way that this stuff is gonna is all gonna happen. Okay, so just want to make sure that everybody is aware of that, as that's a, a pretty uh, important piece to it. Now I want to I want to go ahead and post these links. Uh, oops, went too fast on that one. I'm gonna post these links to the chat here. Um, I know there's a lot of questions that I haven't covered. I know there's a lot more stuff to go into, but I want to make sure I leave time for the other presenters. Um, I've got an article that kind of summarizes a lot of this, including that graphic that I showed earlier, which was the, the big timeline piece. Um, that's available both as an article and a video. Um, I also earlier this week on my newsletter and on my uh, site, I published a list of frequently asked questions of a lot of the stuff that I went through today, but there'll be some more stuff as well. And if you've got any other questions about this, I'm going to go through the chat for the next 15 minutes or so and or 20 minutes, and I'll do my best to answer as many questions um, that I saw come up. Um, but if not, you know, you know, find me on, on any of the social media platforms, um, threads, LinkedIn, Twitter. I'm on just about all of them. So you use that link that you see there. You'll easily find me, drop a question. I'd love to chat with you about this and find out what other questions you have around the add-in model retirement. And I'll keep updating that frequently asked questions post as more and more stuff comes up. So thanks a lot. And I will turn it back over to, I don't know, presenter two. I, for, I forgot which one that was. <laughs>